guys, it's Carissa from Miniature Fairy Tales. Um, today I want to talk to you about how to import SVG files into Cricut Design Space. Now, for some people it can be a bit of a confusing process, so I thought that I would help you out by making this video today. Um, if you're familiar with my YouTube channel, you will know that I already have one of these for uploading on an iPad. However, I know that a lot of people use their PC and prefer to use their PC when they're dealing with Cricut Design Space. So um, even though the two processes are very, very similar, there are subtle differences and some of the buttons are in different places and stuff like that. So I thought I would show you this today. And I also want to show you how to use um, the print and cut feature in with your projects. Um, so we'll be using my cabinet design today because it has some print and cut and it also has some various types of media so that you can um, uh, use different mats and you can use some fabric and some acetate. So I'm going to show you how to bring all that in and how all that works when you're putting it together um, in design space. So you uh, may notice some funny noises in the background. Um, I am using some software to record this today and it's the software that actually um, makes the noise whenever I do a mouse click. So I hope that doesn't get annoying. So let's begin. The first thing I want to do is start a new project. So hit new project over in the left hand corner and it brings us to the canvas. Now um, uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to bring in the SVG. So we're going to upload and then we are going to add the SVG image into our current project. So we need to go to upload first, which is over here. And you'll see I've already got some there, but I want to upload a new image. And I want to browse. So when you got your SVG file, you would have um, unzipped the file and you would have saved those files to a special place on your computer. So that's the place that we'll be going to to pick up those files. So hit browse. And for me, it takes me to my miniature fairy tales folder where my Cricut SVGs live. And here is the China cabinet SVG here. And here is the print and cut plates. We'll be bringing that in a little bit later on. Um, but for now, we're just going to focus on the SVG file. So click open. Oh, I might want to select it first and then click open. Okay, here it is. So it's named MF Miniature Fairy Tales China Cabinet P2. I'm going to leave that name and I'm going to say save. And there it is. So now I click on that one and I want to insert the image. Okay, now you'll notice whenever they bring in a new image or whenever you bring a new image into Design Space, usually when you upload a new SVG, it comes in quite large. So you'll see in the top left hand side, we have what I call a scale box. And that's this box here. Okay, so at the moment, um, it's definitely not one inch by one inch. So what we want to do is we want to scale this down so that uh, everything is proportionate. Now, the other thing you need to know is I have created this design in half scale, but the one inch box will always be a one inch box. So I don't want you to get the one inch confused uh, with full scale because this is a half scale project. However, in saying that, if you want to do this project at full scale or 112 scale, all you'll need to do is to change the scale box to two inches by two inches because that will double the size. And therefore, instead of half scale, you'll have 112 scale. I hope that makes sense. All right, but today we're gonna to leave it at half scale. So we're going to scale our box down to one by one. So this is how we do that. On the right hand side, you'll see we're in the layers panel. And this group at the top controls all of the images underneath it. So everything in here is controlled under this group. So what I would like to do is I want to close off the group. 
And I do this by um, clicking on the eye. So everything is gone now. Um, now I want to scroll through all of the images until I find my one inch by one inch box. And here it is. And the way I can tell is because all the lettering says one inch times one inch. And the box is at the bottom. So I'd like to open up that box now. I don't need the writing. I just need the box. And I am going to select it. And now I'm going to go up to my sizing area and I want to make sure that my padlock is on because I want to keep things in proportion. And the width, I want to put one for one inch because uh, I'm already, sorry, I'm already set up here to work in inches. Uh, but sometimes my um, SVGs will be in centimetres, so you just have to read what the box says. If it says one centimetre by one centimetre, then you need to be in centimetres. If it says one inch by one inch, then you need to be in inches. Okay, so I've got a one in there and I'm going to click over to height and it will make it the same because our little padlock says it must be in proportion. So this would now have brought this down to one inch by one inch, as you can see here. So now if I turn on the eye for the whole group, so I'm just going to turn everything off and turn it all on again, and you can see everything is in proportion now and to scale. My one inch box is one inch by one inch as it should be. Might be just a little, yep, it's a little bit low there. So you can see it's one inch by one inch and everything is measured just as it should be and just as it was designed. So the next thing I want to do now is take away the one inch box because I no longer need this. This is not part of the design. This is just for our um, information only so that we can do our scaling. So again, I'm going to scroll down to the one inch box. Here it is. And I'm going to hit the I. And I'm also going to hit the I on this MF China cabinet group because all the letters are grouped here. So if I do that, it turns them all off. We can no longer see the one inch box or the scale box. So that's that part done. Now, the next thing that we need to do is bring, um, oh, sorry, we need to ensure that our letters are um, draw files, or yeah, they, they, they are drawings. So at the moment, all of the letters come through as um, cut files. So you'll see here, these are letters, but they're set to cut. And that's because every time a new SVG is brought into Cricut Design Space, everything comes in as a cut file by default. So we need to change that. Otherwise, Cricut thinks we want it to cut out the number two instead of um, draw the number two. So to do this, I want to scroll to the top. And then we want to uh, scroll down to our first letter. Here we are. So I want to hold down the shift key and select all of the letters. Okay, let go of the shift key when you scroll. Press the shift key again and select the letters. Carry on, guide through the group like this. Holding shift down as you select. Because if you don't hold shift down, you'll only select one thing and not all the things you click on. And you'll know they're selected because they will turn this grey colour. So it's only the letters that we're doing right now. Now this is a little bit different to the iPad in that on the iPad you can select groups and then unselect the shapes out of those groups. Um, so this is just a little bit different in that we have to select every letter, but it's actually fairly fast to get through. Oh, uh, and here we are. We're up to the, the uh, scale box, so I'm just going to hide that because I, I don't need to do anything further with that. And you would have seen there too, if you want to unselect, if you've accidentally clicked on the wrong thing, just keep your shift key held and click on it again and it will unselect. Okay, I think that's everything. 
Uh, except when I hit that box, I unselected all of the stuff up here. That's okay. We'll go back through. All right, so we've got all those selected. Now we want to go over to the line type and we want to select draw. What this now means is that all of our letters should be draw files. Let's double check that it's worked and I can see here that it has. So that's great, that's that job done. Now what we need to do is um, we need to ensure that our letters are attached to our shapes. So if we were to make it at this stage, um, Cricut would not understand that these letters are attached to these shapes. I'll show you what I mean. What would happen if we didn't attach is you would end up with all of your draw files in one mat and Cricut would think that had to be drawn separately and it would not know to attach them to the shapes on the other mats. That's not what we want. So if I cancel out of here, we'll go back to our canvas. So what we need to do now is we need to attach all of the letters to the shapes that they're sitting on so that they will print as labels when those shapes are cut. So the first thing that we will need to do is go to our big group and ungroup everything. Like so. Okay, so you will see there are some smaller groups within that group. So that's me and that's because um, I, when I designed the file, I grouped like things together to make it easier. So we can use this to our advantage. If I start scrolling down till I get to the first group with letters, here's one here, and I can say attach, and automatically all of those letters are attached to those pieces. So uh, it can be a little bit hard sometimes to see what's attached and what's not, because as you attach, sometimes they often disappear on you. So you can see here, the group automatically changes. So you don't actually need to scroll. You just need to select the groups that come up in front of you and click on attach. Uh, the first couple of times I did this, it confused me because I wondered where everything was going. I was scrolling, looking for the note that said attach because as you attach them, they get a little note on them, which I'll show you and it shows that it's an attached group. Um, but Cricut automatically moves everything so that you don't have to scroll, which is really good. Okay, that one. That one doesn't have any letters, so we don't need to attach. We'll go to this next one. It's only the ones with letter files that you need to attach. Okay, that should be everything, but I always like to double, yeah, this is what I'm talking about. So once they're attached, they, they end up in a little attachment group. But I do like to double check this because I have missed things before. So let's go to make it. And we can see that the first mat no longer has alone letters on it. They are attached to pieces and there doesn't appear to be any more um, random pieces here so that's really good <clears throat> excuse me now um, the next thing I have noticed is that mat number four only has two random little pieces on it I want to describe why this happens so in the actual design file I made these a different color and Cricut Design Space recognizes different colors as different materials so it will automatically set a different color onto a different material thinking that it's um, that it's a different material that you'll be cutting separately. So what we need to do with this, just so we don't confuse Cricut anymore, I'll cancel out of this and I'll go back to the canvas, which will come up soon. There is a little bit of a delay. 
So I have these little bits. Now you can see I've got a group here, so I need to ungroup this. Until they come back. There we go. So now that I've selected this small piece, um, it's the cut line and it's the colour of the cut line. So I just want to make that grey to match in with everything else. I want to do the same on this piece. And once I do this, Cricut now recognises that this material matches the rest of the materials. So now you'll see if I go make it, that black mat has disappeared. So that's great. Um, so the other things that I want to show you about this file are that we also have um, acetate cutting here and we also have some fabric cutting. And I'll show you how you know what's what. So the green ones are fabric cutting. Now these are for some small napkins that um, you can stack up in the china cabinet. So they're green. So you'll see they'll come out on a different mat and you can use the fabric of your choice and have them cut out. The other thing is these two blue squares acetate. So um, they go between this panel and this panel to mimic glass. So again, um, that'll be a new mat. You can place a small piece of acetate and these will cut out for you. Now there is another element to this design which I also want to show you and that's the print and cut feature. So we're going to bring this into this SVG now. Now this is not an SVG. This is a print and cut file, okay? And this comes in as a PNG file. Okay, so um, this is how we do it. So what we want to do is move over to upload. Okay, so we want to upload an image, we want to browse. You're going to go back to wherever you saved all of the um, SVG bundle. And you can see here, China cabinet plates, print and cut PNG. That's the one that we want to open. So when you get to this point, it's going to give you some options. Now it's going to ask you whether your design is simple, moderately complex or complex. So ours does have fine detail and blended colours and it is small and intricate. So we're going to select complex. We're going to continue. And this is where Cricut gives you the opportunity to clear away the background, clean up the images and have it ready for cutting. Um, you don't need to do any of that because in this instance, I've done all that for you. So we will um, continue on. We won't need to use this section. Okay, and now it's asking you if you would like to save this as a print then cut image or whether you want to save it just as a cut image. So today, of course, we're going to save this as a print then cut image. So what that means is you will print these images out on using your printer and then you will take the material that you printed on and you'll place that on a mat and Cricut will cut out the images for you. So the plates are ready. We're saving it as print then cut. I press the save button. Oh, and you can change the name here if you want to. Okay, there it is. I just want to click on that and I want to insert that image into my project. And you can do this with as many PNG images as you like. So if you have an additional image that you think would look fantastic with the cabinet, you by all means can bring that in and also use it in the same fashion. As long as it's a PNG file, you'll be able to manipulate it and do what you want with it. So that's really good. Now, as you can see, it's come in pretty small. So what I have done uh, is I have made a one inch by one inch box in there so that when you make it one inch by one inch, everything else should line up to scale. So 
the way that we will do this is we will um, all of these boxes are one inch by one inch so we can line this up with um, oops a days we can line this up with the grid actually what we might want to do is bring it over this side and it's a little bit fiddly because it's so small but we're going to scale this up until the lines meet top and bottom and if I'm right then top and bottom should match the sides because everything is kept in proportion so let's just check that and that is one inch by one inch so now your plates should be to scale let's have a quick look and just make sure this is how you can tell so one plate should sit nicely on a shelf and your shelves are going to run straight through here through the middle of this design here so you can bring this over and just double check it but it is right your plates will fit really well on there and so that's that all done and that's now ready to print and cut so you can see here it's added a layer of its own and this is different it's these are not all separate so we can't now remove the scale box as we did we will be printing that um, so let's click make it and see what happens here all right so you can see Cricut has added a mat to the start it said it's going to fit it onto um, letter size paper now if you're working in the metric system this will probably be on an A4 I would suggest um, but because we are an imperial um, it's chosen a letter size which is slightly different from an A4 but not by too much okay you can see that Cricut has made a prominent line around the image and Cricut uses this to determine the measurements so that it can cut out your pieces accurately um, so once you hit continue it will ask you to print the image so it will want to connect to your printer it will then print the image and then you'll need to place that image onto your mat on your piece of paper and then you load it just like you would with any other material and Cricut will go ahead and print that out once you give it the go ahead that it's ready to go and then you'll make your way through the rest of your mats as you normally would um, and that's it so I do hope that this has helped you and also possibly given you some more ideas to be further creative in the future with other images that you can bring in and print and cut and uh, really does add a lot of diversity to your projects and really opens the doors to some amazing amazing things so I will leave this here now um, if you would like more information on this project or how to get your hands on this cabinet and these little plate templates you can find me on Etsy my store name is miniature fairy tale AU I'm also available on Instagram and Facebook my business name is Miniature Fairy Tales. I do thank you very much for stopping by today. I wish you an enjoyable rest of your day and I'm looking forward to catching up with you next time. Bye guys. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like or subscribe for more future videos.